If you've played any retail Frost Mage in the last six years, it's fair to say the spec looks nothing like it used to. These days, Fire is considered the more proactive spec due to actually being able to make game-winning plays rather than just being a Frostbolt turret. Wrath Classic is finally here, and with it, arguably the most skillful version of Frost Mage that WoW has ever seen, which can be very intimidating to a new player. Not to worry though, as we're here to give you a head start. We will cover what races to play, what talents to pick, what glyphs you'll be running with, your early and late season gear, professions, and some essential macros. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcap after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with skill capped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. For Alliance and Wrath in general, it has to be human. Every man for himself <coughs> will to survive is just too good not to make. An extra trinket slot is completely game breaking when season 8 hits, so you'll be glad you chose human. As for Horde, you're still going to be playing undead, however your will of the Forsaken is significantly weaker than in TBC. It no longer gives you 5 seconds of immunity and will trigger a 45 second CD on your trinket. Using your trinket will also put your will on a 45 second CD. As mentioned, you're going to want to try your hardest to sell your friends on playing Alliance for this expansion. Goodbye cool undead models, hello OP trinkets. Moving on from TBC to Wrath, Frost Mages get a ton of new and exciting talents. Hello Deep Freeze my old friend, it's so good to have you back. This is going to be your best overall build. Let's quickly go over some of the less appreciated but super important talents. To begin with, we have Frost Warding. Any talent that gives you a bit of extra armor is going to help out tremendously versus rogues spamming ambushes into you for 6,000 a hit, but the really insane part about it is the chance to restore mana. In Wrath, mages can actually go oom. This is why you have abilities like Evocation and Mana Gem. Frost Warding gives your Frost and Fire Wards a 30% chance to negate damage and convert the absorbed damage into upwards of 2,000 mana. Make sure you time this for when you know a spell is about to hit you, otherwise people are more than likely to just purge it. You'll also want to make sure you're pressing the appropriate ward for what school of magic is coming at you. If you press Frost Ward when a Lava Burst is coming at you, there will be no chance of any returned mana. Next up, we have Improved Blizzard. Now, according to the Wowhead Talent Calculator, putting one point in this will only give you a 25 percent slow for one second, but if we look in game, it's actually a 45 percent undispellable slow for five seconds. That's a pretty nice bug for us mages, let's hope that Blizzard is slow at fixing it. Honestly, even if they do fix it, this talent is still great. If you use it on multiple targets, you're very likely to get both fingers of frost and brain freeze. Just make sure that once you do get a fingers proc, you cancel your Blizzard, as ticks of it will consume the fingers procs. Don't go overboard on fishing for these though, as Blizzard costs a ton of mana. Anna. Moving along, Shattered Barrier is a super useful talent for so many reasons. For one, it shares DR with your Frostbite instead of your regular Novas. Two, you're going to have times in Wrath where you have your Deep Freeze ready, but you're just not getting Fingers procs. If you know that your Ice Barrier is about to break, you can move over to whoever you want to Deep and just wait. And three, you don't need to worry about Shattered Barrier breaking CC like your Pet Nova and Frost Nova do since it doesn't actually deal any damage. Lastly, for talents, we have Magic Attunement. You don't take this talent for the Amplify Magic Damage Reduction. The real benefit is the 6 yard increase on Polymorph and CS. That puts Polymorph at the exact same 36 yard range that your Deep Freeze is on, so you can chain CC targets a lot smoother. And the Counterspell range is especially nice to avoid the 1800 Drake Dog wannabes globaling you from across the map. Now it's time to go over Glyphs, which may seem a bit confusing, but let's break it down. You will always want to be running Evocation, Ice Barrier, and Polymorph. I don't know about you guys, but I've played with some pretty stressy healers over the years, like their job is hard or something. Glyph of Evocation gives you a 60% health heal if you're able to finish the channel. There's a ton of CC in Wrath, so your healer is inevitably going to be locked out of the game sometimes. If you're ever able to get away and channel a full Evocation, chances are it will turn the game around. 
The shields are a massive part of how you'll survive in Wrath, and Glyph of Ice Barrier adds an extra 30% absorption. What's not to love? We all had that game in TBC where someone dotted a target you wanted to be spamming sheep on. Not to worry, as Wrath brings in Glyph of Polymorph, which removes all dots on the target sheep. You'll finally be able to play comps like Mage Lock, Mage Shadow Priest, Mage Ellie, and even Mage Warrior without having to worry about your partner's dots making you completely useless. Mages uniquely are the only class in Wrath to have three minor glyphs that are actually useful. Pick up Glyphs of Fire and Frost Ward for a small chance to reflect spells at your opponents. This won't happen often, but when it does, it feels amazing. For your last minor glyph, pick up Glyph of Arcane Intellect for when you need to rebuff. As previously mentioned, shields are your main tool for surviving as a Frost Mage in Wrath, so having a bit of extra purge protection can help keep you alive. Next up, we're going to cover gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our mage series, it is available only at skillcap.com. There, you can access our premium damage and playstyle courses, which were designed by expert Wrath of the Lich King players. If that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating game guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com today. Moving on to gear. First, let's cover your stat priorities and breakpoints, then we'll cover your gem and enchants. Prioritize getting the hit and spell pen caps first. Aim for 130 spell penetration and 4% hit rating. This will give you everything you need for spells like Frost Resistance Aura, Mage Armor, Mark of the Wild, and so on. There are, however, racials and even talents in the game for rogues, such as Heightened Senses and Sacred Cleansing for Paladins. For now, we're going to have to advise you not to try and overcap for these, as overcapping on the beta is not preventing any of the resists. After getting hit and pen out of the way, you'll want to prioritize stacking as much haste and raw spell power as possible. The more haste you can get, the more you'll be able to do. You don't need to worry about crit rating, as you naturally have this built into your Shatter talent. Here is your pre-biz list for Season 5 for both factions. Feel free to pause to review the items one by one, but the majority of your gear will be from PvP, with off pieces coming from select heroic dungeons. Note that your weapon slot should technically include the Savage Spellblade, Wand, with Grimoire offhand, but it is unclear if these will be available during the initial stages of Season 5. For Horde, it's the same, but just sub out your flow of knowledge for the regular PvP trinket. And this is what your late season bis list will look like. As you can see, it is a mix of both PvP and PvE gear, but the majority of items are from Arena only. Once again, feel free to pause and to review items. And again, note that your trinket slots will vary depending on whether you are Horde or Alliance. If you are Alliance, you can swap out your medallion for the Flow of Knowledge trinket or Battlemaster's Avidity. Going over your gems real quick, you'll want to get the Insightful Earth Siege Diamond for your meta gem. As we mentioned before, you can actually go Oom as a mage in this expansion, and if that happens, the game is is usually unplayable. Besides that, you'll be prioritizing haste mostly, with two spell pen gems in the early season. Once you've purchased the deadly offhand slash wand though, you can sub out the spell pen gem in your helm for some more haste. Moving on to your enchants, we will talk more about your glove enchant in the profession section, but everything else is pretty standard. With Arcanum and Inscription of Dominance as helmet and shoulder enchants, Resilience on chest, Spell Pen on cloak, Spell Power on bracers, and Black Magic on weapon. Then Tusker's Vitality on boots. The only thing we strongly recommend is getting the Earthen Leg Armor rather than the Sapphire Spell Thread. While more damage is usually the way to go, this expansion is fast. We mean real fast. The enchant also gives an absurd amount of resilience, which in the early season is almost more than main piece items. Wrath is without a doubt the expansion where professions played the biggest part in competitive PvP. Believe it or not, in original Wrath, you could actually use the Nitro Boots in Arena for a short time. For your professions, you will want to run Engineering for the aforementioned Glove Enchant. The pace of Season 5 is going to be ridiculous, so having that extra burst from the Rocket Glove will be handy. Both of these enchants are off the global cooldown, Rocket Glove having a 45 second CD and the Accelerations having a 1 minute CD. Throughout Wrath, the Rocket Gloves will always deal the same amount of damage, so they are most valuable in the early seasons. The Haste enchant will become far more common as the expansion progresses, but feel free to try both out in Season 5. As for your secondary profession, you will want to pick up Jewel Crafting because it gives you the strongest boost to any stat you want, which as a Frost Mage is important since you will want as much haste as possible. Let's wrap things up by going through your macros. Making sure you have these set up correctly will help out a ton. To begin with, you have your standard target and focus arena 1, 2, and 3. There's a good reason almost every pro WoW player uses these macros. They just make the game incredibly fluid and are a huge part of having fast, reactive plays. You'll want focus macros for your deep, sheep, and your CS. 
Alternatively, you could have deep one, two, three, or CS one, two, three, or sheep one, two, three, but that's nine binds instead of three. The last thing we want is for you to feel overwhelmed, so our advice is to just go with focus macros for now and branch off into arena one, two, three later. Focus rank one Frostbolt is an essential part of your rotation as a Frost Mage. The reason for this is that there are a ton of dispels in Wrath and it puts up a really good trash buff, Winter's Chill. The main reason you'll be using this is to counter Warlock's Devour magic ability, which allows them to dispel their teammates on an 8 second cooldown. Something you should get in the habit of doing versus Warlocks is casting a rank 1 Frostbolt on their healer, then deep sheeping them. This way there will be a 1 in 3 chance that the Warlock devours the important spell, the Polymorph. More often than not, you will be using your Ice Block offensively to get out of CC to score kills. Doing this using the regular spell will take over an entire second, whereas if you have a macro, you can cancel it instantly. Just be careful not to spam it when you're actually in trouble. Moving on, we have Focus Spell Steal. This is great when facing priests who don't cover their power infusions, but it really shines when against shamans. It can be really awkward to CS a shaman if he has a grounding totem down, as all your spells either have travel times, are super high value like Deep Freeze, or are just short range like Fire Blast. Thankfully, there's Spell Steal. It will consume grounding instantly, allowing you to CS. Worth noting, this won't work if the shaman has no magic buffs, but that's extremely rare. Moving on, Warlocks are a massive pain to deal with in Wrath as a mage. No matter what you do, it always feels like they have an answer. Something you can do to slow them down is making sure you clear yourself and your team of their curses. If you're not excited about this, just make sure you have a macro for your healer, as Shaman's Hex is also considered a curse. As the expansion progresses and Warlocks begin playing more Affliction, they will gain access to a talent called Amplify Curse, essentially doubling the speed of how fast they can use curses on your team. With this in mind, you want to have macros for your entire team. You will want to macro your pet's freeze ability so that you have an on-demand Nova. Keep in mind that in this expansion, your pet Nova doesn't give you fingers of frost. And for those of you who are looking to use deep CS and sheep arena 123 and are suddenly all out of places to put your abilities, here's a cast sequence macro that gets rid of your conjure mana gem. Next, we have an invis macro. In Wrath, you can't actually see enemies when you use invisibility. Usually on retail, the way you break your invis is by casting something on them, but that's not an option here. This macro will save you time as as you won't have to click your invis off or use an AoE spell to cancel it. Ever had your water elemental break CC? These macros will help make sure that your welly stays on the target you're actually hitting as you wouldn't cast these spells at a target you're intending to sheep. While we're talking about your welly, make sure to toggle it from defensive to passive. It's automatically set to defensive and some players don't realize this for a really long time. And if you're worried about your mirror images having a mind of their own and breaking your CC, just keep in mind that you can actually stop them from attacking your target by pressing your welly's follow command. Pressing pet passive won't work, but pressing follow will. We don't make the rules. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Mage? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.